Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad that you're with us today to stay curious. Guess what? Yep, we're going to talk about women in space in the month of March. We're going to feature four of the eight ladies who took their trip to space. Uh, at least one of them. Some of them did multiple trips in the month of March. I'm looking for my month of March uh, folder there, Marty. Gosh, I left it on the on, on there. Hello to Marty Winkle as he goes over to my uh, desk here in our American Space Museum Stay Curious Studios to hand me my month of March folder. And we're always going to talk about uh, for the women, for the eight. That's what I wanted to do, I think. Yeah, eight women, 59 Earthlings total left the Earth in the month of March during the Great Shuttle era. We'll see some of those missions here in just a minute and talk about those women as we celebrate Women's Month. This, there you go, Make Me Smaller Women's History Month here to, in 2024. This being March 26th. Um, and we want to open up the show, say hi to Marty Winkle, and ask Marty how many humans... How many Earthlings are orbiting the Earth right now? There we have seven spaceships are parked at the International Space Station right now. We just had the MS-25 crew right there dock. And we have, how many humans, Marty, is your guess, orbiting the Earth at this moment? It is a guess. I'll say 17. Nope, nope. That's, 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 way, that's too high. It's 13. Ten on the ISS and three Chinese that will be coming back pretty soon, uh, completing their six-month tour on their heavenly palace. Tangong is the name of the Chinese space station. So you got space uh, seven spaceships parked at the space station, including the SpaceX Dragon Crew Endeavor. All right, you see that eight over there at the end. Uh, SpaceX, uh, they've been up there about, uh, oh, about three weeks, I think. We're going to talk. We're going to go over this in detail on Thursday, and Mikey Haddad's going to do STS-45, the Atlas mission that does the bedrock for today's global warming stats, the atmospheric uh, test bed. Uh, Mikey Haddad's going to be here tomorrow to talk about. We got SpaceX Dragon cargo ship is there. You got the Northrop Grumman Cygnus space freighter, and you got the Soyuz M20, MS-24, and MS-25. And the Progress, uncrewed, Progress 86 and 87 resupply ships are there. They stuff those full of the dirty laundry, unused equipment, and burn them up in the atmosphere when they come back. So, uh, and that's the same way the crew Dragon, Cargo Dragon, CRS-30 does come back. So, you got four cargo ships and three human spacecraft docked to the International Space Station. Two Russian Soyuz spacecraft, about the same that they used uh, 40 years ago. The newest members are the uh, Soyuz crew that was launched a couple days ago, Oleg Novinsky there. Novinsky, he's a fourth time veteran, 534 days in space. Uh, Tracy Caldwell Dyson, has waited 14 years to return to space as one of NASA's astronauts. She was last up there on Expedition 23-24 in March 2010. So 14 years to the month that she's been in, uh, missing space. And Tracy is very familiar to you that watch the NASA channel. She does the Station Life segment and is very animated as as she should be, she is the singer for the Max Q band, all astronaut band. I've watched a few videos of her belting out a, a few uh, Fleetwood Mac tunes and stuff, such there. I think she does heart very well, too. Uh, three EVAs to her credit, so she'll probably do one on this Expedition 71 uh, is what we're up to now. And she was up there at Expedition 24 when she left. Marina Belisavia is a uh, Belisarus astronaut, and she just got three days in space right now. So uh, Novinsky is going to pilot back in about a week the other two Russians who've been up there for almost six months. Uh, and then 
uh, Dyson and uh, uh, Valinsky are going to stay up there as part of the Expedition 7071 uh, crew up there. So uh, 13 Earthlings are orbiting the Earth at this very moment. There's your three newest ones crammed in that Soyuz spacecraft. But I give it to Tracy Caldwell Dyson there for waiting 14 years between launches. Uh, and, and you know she's just eating it up. Uh, so, Marty, we had a good day today out to Space Center. Always when we go out there, it's a good day. There you are with our good buddy, Mike Baker. Banks is pilot of two and, and commander of uh, two space flights. Uh, one of them went to the Mir Space Station. That's the patch he's wearing there. Uh, great guy, isn't he, Marty? Yeah. Yes, he, he's very nice, very easy to talk to. Really a good guy. Yeah, he is. He enjoys doing this. He does a great talk for you as you've had gone out there and, and seen his talk. Uh, he takes you from launch to landing like most of them do, but he intersperses. I love his geology lesson, geography lesson, I mean. He takes uh, pictures that you're looking at, and you go, what am I looking at? And my God, you're looking at Denver at the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. And he details everything to you in just such a way that I suggested to him that, Mike, when you come back, let's uh, record a uh, those uh, graphics of the uh, geography lesson you gave. And I think he'd be fun to do that uh, every month, you know, uh, uh, geography with Mike Baker. Banks takes you to the around the world. He does a great job of that, doesn't he, Marty? Sure does. So, uh, all right. Well, today, get out there to Space Center. We had Nick Thomas on yesterday. Though it was a rather long 90 minutes, it just breezes by as Nick Thomas talks about astronauts, our heroes, like nobody else can because he's hung out with just dozens and dozens of them on a, a, a business level as the, I call him the astronaut wrangler, Nick Thomas. He's the lead educator at the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex. Well, I threw this picture in here, Marty, because on this date, March 26, 1958, okay, that is uh, 66 years ago, the U.S. government and this military a panel of President Eisenhower's Science Advisory Committee, they made a statement that space has military significance. And the development of space technology, we need to do it for several reasons. One, human curiosity, two, scientific knowledge, three, national prestige, and four, defense of our country. And you all might go six decades later, duh, yeah, that's what the biggest spy versus spies going on, uh, 200 to 400 miles above the Earth, all those spy satellites. But this was a big revelation in 1958 because Sputnik had shocked the world in October 1957. And then in January 31st, 1958, America launched our first Explorer spacecraft. And here is this body of science advisors to our president, the, the uh, allied supreme leader, by the way, President Eisenhower was of World War II, involved with the D-Day invasion and everything else to end that horrible war. Here was President Eisenhower saying, you know what, I think space has got some significance out there. And Marty, we just saw another beautiful launch last night. Uh, in the cloud, SpaceX did, where they launched another group of satellites, and they've got about 5,000 satellites now orbiting the Earth. And back in 1958, they just realized that might be a good idea. So uh, the newly created Space Force here in America now has its own $15 billion budget. The Department of Defense has its own top secret budget that eclipses NASA's 20-some billion dollars a year. Uh, NASA's fiscal year budget uh, is about $25 billion right now. So uh, uh, a lot of revelation in, in 1958 that space might be good to help protect the country. Now we couldn't live without it. And a large part is because of the 30-year shuttle legacy that had 10 Department of Defense missions that I'm told had interesting assets aboard them. 
by several of the astronauts that I've talked to that had those DOD missions. Well, Marty, let's get into the shuttles of the month of March. Here we had, um, here's their logos of them all. We've gone over some of them this, this month. Uh, you've got uh, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten beautiful shuttles. Every orbiter flew but Challenger. There you see the numbers there, three for Columbia, OV-99, uh, Discovery's tail number was 103, uh, uh, Atlantis 104 and Endeavor 105, their official Rockwell tail numbers there. We're going to talk about STS-45 with Mikey Haddad tomorrow. He's going to talk about the payloads that that uh, investigated the atmosphere. He's not going to talk about the investigations. He's going to talk about being a level four technician that put those payloads in that payload bay with all those astronauts. Uh, very curious about what they were going to do in space. But these, uh, in the month of March, of the 59 Earthlings that orbited the Earth, eight of them were women. Nancy Curie, Tamara Jernigan, Wendy Lawrence, Marsha Ivins, Susan Helms, Shannon Lucid, Linda Godwin, and Kathy Sullivan all went in space in the month of March. And we're going to highlight a couple of them uh, because it is National Women's Month to celebrate the history of women in America and all over the world for that matter. Uh, here at the end of the month, I like doing some of this at the end of the month. A lot of people, particularly the news media, get their Women's of the Month stuff out of the way the first week or two. It's the whole month, so here it is, March 26th, and I want to look up close at four extraordinary NASA astronauts. <clears throat> but we got to throw a fifth one in there. Nicole Stott, who lives over in St. Petersburg, grew up on the west coast of Florida, one of our favorite uh, Earthlings, wearing the T-shirt Hope as she's in the cupola on STS-133, the last flight of Discovery. Uh, she was also a three-month inhabitant on the International Space Station. Threw that in there just because it's Nikki and we love her and uh, all she stands for. She's always emphasizing that there should be no borders on Earth. We should all be treating each other like Earthlings. We're all crewmates on a spaceship. And the only border that matters is that thin blue line that we heard Mike ba Baker talk about it today in his talk. Look at that thin blue line when you get to space. That's all that makes us human and keeps the Earth a viable planet. And a shout out to Carlton Bailey. Took this photograph of the cupola in the, uh, I guess that'd be the uh, Orbit and Checkout Building, Marty. The ONC, yeah. is that where they probably have that? Or that'd be in the SSPF, Space Shuttle Processing Facility. That's where that would be. Before it went to space, it has covers on it. And there's uh, Nicole Stott uh, with the covers off uh, in space. So just had to give a shout out to my friend Carlton Bailey, who did a lot of these things. This was put up in 2010. So we're talking 14 years ago when we were young. Right, Carlton? Sally Ride, our first American woman to go to space, had this quote. I would like to be remembered as someone who was not afraid to do what she wanted to do, as someone who took risks along the way in order to achieve her goals. Those risks as a woman back in the 70s and 80s when Sally Ride was an astronaut were not just uh, risks of, of, of your life type of thing. It was taking a risk as a woman to be singled out and even ostracized uh, for being a woman trying to do things that a man did. Uh, Sally Ride broke the mold for that. And, and I also like a quote that Sally Ride has where she says, you can't see what you can't, no, you can't be what you can't see. I love that quote from Sally Ride. You can't be what you can't see. That was her statement of being a role model for women. She wasn't that comfortable with being that role model, the introvert she was, but she realized if you can't see a woman doing things, you can't be that woman. And so un, just uh, she'll be thought about 100 years from now, Sally Ride, and we're so proud that we have her handprints 
in our women's gallery here at the American Space Museum. Her handprints in bronze. Well, let's look at the uh, one of the missions of March was uh, Astro 2. That was the uh, STS-67 mission Mar uh, launched on March 2nd, 1995, with two women aboard, Tamara Jernigan and Wendy Lawrence. And then it had two astronauts on board, Ron Paris and Sam Durance, both have passed away. And we're going to talk about this mission at Shuttle Fest uh, coming up here in three weeks, April 13th. And uh, didn't even put a slide in for Shuttle Fest. I will not forget to do that the next few missions. There's the planet Jupiter, uh, one of the investigations there in the spectrum with the astronaut kind of symbol there for the A for Astro. But here's a, a Tamara Jernigan, uh, born, uh, uh, known as Tammy, born May 7th, 1959. So she will be approaching 50, uh, 65 years old. And uh, you're going to get all that senior citizen stuff in the mail, Tammy, though she uh, hardly looks, uh, look at her in her, when she was chosen as an astronaut in 1986, all right? She took her first trip to space five years later, five space shuttle missions, three on Columbia and one each on Endeavor and Discovery. And so she's got 63 days in space. There she is training as a robot arm operator uh, on uh, on her flight uh, STS-67 uh, we talked about, which was the second flight of this uh, suite of telescopes. Um, she was deputy chief of the astronaut office uh, for a while. Uh, like I said, 63 days in space, one EVA. She did do a spacewalk, uh, seven hours, 55 minutes. Uh, Marty, and oh, there she is with her husband, astronaut Peter Wissaw. Uh, and they both work at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Then when she hits 65, she might be retiring. Uh, he, she's got one more mission than her husband, uh, who flew with uh, Bakes, Mike Baker. So I uh, thought I'd put another picture or two in there of her. Wanted to mention, I um, believe she was with uh, Tom Jones on the mission where the door didn't open up on the EVA. And imagine all that training and there was uh, the door wouldn't open up because a washer was stuck in between. The, remember that, Marty? You talked about that. So Tamara uh, Jernigan, one of our outstanding astronauts and a woman and a woman who flew in the month of March. There she is with her husband, Peter Wissel. Next, also flying this same mission was, uh, well, her nickname is there on her, her name badge there. Too short, Wendy Lawrence. We've seen Wendy Lawrence at the Space Center many, many times. Uh, she's one of the, the regulars out there. We love talking to her. She was born in Jacksonville, Florida, and is the daughter and granddaughter of naval aviators. In fact, her father has a uh, U.S. A, a destroyer named after him, the William P. Lawrence. Uh, she grew up in uh, uh, Alexandria, Virginia, Virginia, though, after being born in Jacksonville. And she still lives there. A MIT graduate uh, and the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute uh oceanographer her four flights to space has her 51 days in space that'd be normal each shuttle flight was from a week to 10 days so if you did four of them you could plan it that they're probably up there for over 40 days um, she went to the space station mayor uh, on atlantis in 1997 sts 86 two dockings with mirror in fact back to back uh, I, we talked to her about that. Uh, she said it was just a mess. It was like a flea market of stuff everywhere. The Russians never threw away anything, she said. And uh, then she was on the important uh, crew that was the return to flight uh, with uh, uh, Eileen Collins as the commander there. So uh, Wendy Lawrence, uh, love seeing her. There she is with her good buddy. There's Nick Thomas, who I was talking about. Great show with Nick Thomas tomorrow. We not only talked about Gemini 8, Apollo 9, and Gemini 3, all month of March missions, but we talked about a little bit about George Abbey, who passed away, the great leader from, at the Johnson Space Center. 
and Tom Stafford and the birthday of Jim Lovell. We had a great conversation with Nick tomorrow, yesterday. There he is with Wendy when they went out to the Artemis One launch pad. And here she is uh, with uh, Carlton. That's what CB looks like, who offered the picture of the cupola there. Uh, good to see her with the mask off. She was wearing a mask last time she was there. So with a lot of colds and flus and COVID going around, you can't blame an astronaut for uh, all the, wanting to wear a mask with all of the uh, international visitors out there. So another busy day at the Space Center today, Marty. But we always enjoy seeing Wendy Lawrence. I missed her this turnaround. There's uh, Carlton Bailey uh, with one of his favorite cats in space shirts, okay? I don't know if I like that one better or the pizza cats one, Marty, of his shirts. <laughs> Marty has no comment, okay. Uh, another wonderful woman we celebrate during the month of March, though she didn't have a mission in March. This is uh, Kapana Chala, KC. Her quote is, the path from dreams to success does exist. May you have the vision to find it, the courage to get on to it, and the perseverance to follow it. Wishing you a great journey. Now that's some inspiring words there for me and everyone else in anything you do. Uh, even if that vision is a short vision. Uh, you got to have the courage to do what you want to do and, and, and the steady pressure to follow through with it. And uh, Casey, uh, of course, killed in the Columbia reentry disaster, a very nature-driven woman. Her ashes are spread over one of the great uh, parks in America out in the West. A uh, couple missions of, uh, that we want to talk about uh, is uh, March. Uh, is, uh, with, uh, we've got a woman on that one um, about Curry, yes is on that mission. Um, that was a Hubble telescope repair mission there. We've got several hard hat missions on in the month of March uh, that I love talking about. Uh, where's my cheat notes here? Two mirror dockings. You got the Kibo 123 there on the far left uh, in the middle. That's very important to the uh, Japanese Kibo and Dexter, the remote controlled uh, robot out, outside uh, the space station. And the uh, STS-29 is the, the Department of Defense mission. And STS-3, the only mission that landed out at White Sands, uh, Jack Lausma and uh, uh, Gordon Fullerton, the two-man crew on that one. So what other women do we have? We've got Shannon Luce who was on this mission, but we're gonna feature Linda Godwin uh, who was born July 2nd, 1952. So she's coming up on uh, 72 uh, years of age. All right. Uh, there she is when she was chosen as an astronaut in 1985. All right. Was her selection. She was uh, uh, actually 86, the same as Tamara. They were classmates there. Four space flights. 38 days in space, 10 hours with two uh, spacewalks, uh, a mission specialist uh, on a mere docking mission, SES-76. Uh, there she is in space on the uh, STS-108, her last flight. So she is very experienced, enjoying time in space up there. Born in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, but she considers Jackson. Missouri to be her home and a Southeast Missouri State graduate. There she is, beautiful Linda Godwin, later in life there. Uh, she married astronaut Stephen Nagel, uh, who was her commander of her first flight, STS-37, and Steve Nagel died of cancer in 2014, 10 years ago. So another astronaut uh, marriage. And what other cool things? Um, has she done? I think I got another picture of her. Physics teacher, concepts of astronomy. Uh, she uh, love to meet her out there. I, I think she'd be a great speaker because she is a, a teacher uh, in physics. Uh, and I was trying to see if she was involved in, uh, I think this is the University of Missouri, 
her home state where she would do. She's an instrument rated private pilot. And uh, so we'll be wishing her a happy birthday, July 2nd, when she turns 72. And uh, so good. Uh, Linda Godwin, one of our women in space in the month of March. Uh, though she wasn't in the month of March, May Jameson, the first African-American woman to go to space, said, never be limited by other people's imagination. Never limit others because of your own limited imagination. I like it. Turning the tables on yourself there, okay? Uh, uh, so you can't be limited in what other people think by your own limited imagination there. And STS-62 brings us to our final Women of the Month of March to celebrate here. And that is Marsha Ivins. Marsha was on the uh, STS um, uh, uh, Casper and Andy Allen mission of STS-62. Uh, uh, that was a life science mission uh, on board there. Uh, and uh, let me see 62 here. Just look up there to 62 was the, uh, I can find it real quick, what they did there. Of course, I'm not going to find it quick. This is the last one I'm going to look at of the 10 missions here. The Atlas with Mikey Haddad is going to be really good. Looking forward to that tomorrow. And, uh, of course, it's the last one. Um, microgravity payload, that's what that is. It's a big microgravity research. They did uh, magnetic things. They had um, uh, Columbia's orbit was lowered to uh, 20 nautical miles to facilitate some of the experiments. So uh, John Casper and Andy Allen were flying the ship. Peter Thoet. Uh, Sam Gemmar was on that one, Marty. We see Sam all the time. Yeah, that was a long mission, 14 days in space. So Marsha, known for her long hair in space, there she is getting ready uh, uh, to get out and go to the spacecraft. She was born in Baltimore, Maryland, and grad but graduated from Wallingford, Pennsylvania High School, Nether Province High School. Uh, she is a uh, Jewish American and went to the University of Colorado in Boulder, an aerospace engineer. All right, 55 days in space. She's going to be... Uh, initiated, inducted, if you will, into the Astronaut Hall of Fame. Show you here just a second that with another astronaut here at the end of May. Five missions, like I said, each about 10 days. Um, there she is later in life, waiting around to, for her turn somewhere, probably, Marty. Well known for her, oh, there, that's her hair in space there. She's always got these cool pictures of her long hair. And uh, David Hilmers. And Marsha are going to be inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame March, uh, I think June 1st is a ceremony. And uh, they're, they're, they're rookie photographs there of each of them there. So there you have it. Uh, some of our women uh, in space there. Uh, let me, let, let, let's look at Marsha here. Um, I had some quotes. Uh, uh, she said about being in space, you get a feeling of incredible insight when you consider the stars. You're going around the Earth 90 minutes. You don't see borders. You don't see boundaries. Uh, some of the recognizable parts of the Earth, like the Sinai Peninsula in the Middle East, uh, you can't believe that people have been killing each other for thousands of years over that piece of land. It's just a piece of land out the window, she said. The old idea at the Great Wall of China can be seen as uh, as a myth. You can't see the Great Wall. It's very long and very windy, but it's very narrow, and it's got trees around it. You can sometimes see runways with your naked eye, and you sometimes see roads at night. So uh, she said she's a Trekkie over Star Wars. Those are the Trekkies make you happy out there. Uh, I'll always watch a Star Trek movie. They just make me happy, says Marcia Ivins. So. <laughs> Well, we were happy to share this with you today, all about women in space and space history. We've got Suta Laika B watching today. Thank you, Suta. And we've got uh, Gary Gerald's watching, Dave Stangy, Doug Forrest, Mark Usiak, 
Uh, we shouted out to Carlton Bailey, Bill Whiting. Great to see Bill today getting an autograph from Bakes. Tom UCX watching. Tom Celentano's up in there. Wonder You must have got your snow shovel out here the last couple of days, Tom. He's up here in Connecticut. Clyde Lewis, thank you for watching. And Cynthia Rossi, great seeing Cynthia over the weekend as some of the space hipsters got together at the, the world-famous Zarella's Pizzeria. And I did have a good pizza there on Sunday uh, with, uh, with you all. So tomorrow we got a special guest, Mikey Haddad, who does his once-a-month once month thing talking about one of the payloads that he and these space workers put into the space shuttle payload bay. You're not going to want to miss the, the story about the Atlas mission, STS-45, that was very important, the science of it. Uh, but he's got some stories about how the science almost didn't make it had it not been for some heroics of the space workers, who we love celebrating here at the American Space Museum. Our, one of our favorites, Mikey Haddad, will be here with you tomorrow. So until then, Marty, anything else to button up over there on our Streamlabs production? Nope, we're good to go. Well, great. And I'm good to go, too. We're going to go out and, and uh, have a little fun with Mike Baker tonight. He's going to do some things uh, with some items he's going to put in the auction. And so it's going to be a great night here on the Space Coast. Hope yours is a good night wherever you are. Until next time, I'm Mark Marquette saying I can't wait to see you in the American Space Museum to bridge the space between us.